Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. AI, machine learning, deep learning, these are all the buzzwords of the day. Um, and today what we're going to do is I'm going to cash in on that by talking about neural networks. What people call deep learning today is essentially, well, a form of machine learning that is built on top of neural networks. So it's worth knowing at least the big picture of how it works. We're not going to delve into the nitty gritty technical details of the math today. Okay, so it's just a big picture understanding. Now, typically in machine learning, how we structure our data is we have a set of columns or variables. Then we have a column that is an output, also known as a label. So the idea is that we can use all these variables to predict the output. To give you a concrete example, let's say we're talking about heart disease. We can measure things like a person's resting heart rate, uh, their cholesterol level, their age, whether they have any chest pain, so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, our label would be positive or negative. That is whether they actually have heart disease. What we can then do is gather many rows of such data, feed it to something like a neural network so that it can spot patterns. And in the future, by giving it new data that follows the variables we have, it can use what it has learned to predict whether it is you know, positive or negative. That's the idea. And while there are many algorithms that can do this, today we are primarily concerned with a neural network. How does it achieve this you know, miraculous prediction? Essentially, a neural network looks something like this. Every little one of these circles you see is what we can consider an artificial neuron. It is one part of this entire neural network. As you can see, they are arranged in a very specific pattern. In fact, every one of these are known as layers. So we have layers of neurons that are interconnected with neurons from other layers. To be precise, every neuron on one layer is connected to every neuron on the next layer. So as you can see, this neuron here is being fed by every neuron from the previous layer and so on for, well, essentially every neuron you see on screen. The layers themselves serve different purposes. We start off with the input layer on the left. Every one of these neurons are being fed by one of the input columns in our data set. We can have any number of layers in the middle. These are known as hidden layers and the number of nodes on each layer or the number of layers you use are all decided, well, by you. The person creating the neural network needs to make this decision. Finally, on the right side, we have our output layer. For this, we have one neuron per output. So in the case of the heart disease set, since there are only two responses, yes or no, then, well, we'll only have two output neurons. This in a nutshell is how a neural network is actually structured. So how does everything in the middle work? Well, as it turns out, there is one important thing we haven't seen, and that is for every one of these connections, we have what is known as a weight. This weight says how much a particular neuron contributes to, well, the next guy in line. So every neuron is essentially fed by all the neurons of its previous layer, but the twist here is that the contributions of each neuron from the preceding layer are not equal. Different neurons have different weights. Those with heavier weights will contribute more to this particular neuron. So what we can do is we can feed in the inputs on the left. At the end of the day, what's going to happen is all the information, all the numbers are going to trickle through until we reach the output neurons. Remember, one stands for positive, one stands for negative. And yeah, the hope is that one of them would appear as one, the other would appear as zero, or close enough to those values. And that would be our prediction. Where do those weights come from? We haven't talked much about that. You see, at the beginning, before you've really trained a neural network to do anything, the weights can be random, or they could be set to a preset value. What this means is, well, the answer is probably going to be wrong. What happens then is that you're going to compare the answer it has given you with the ground truth. And this allows us to compute what is known as an error, which to put things simply is how far off the network is from getting the correct answer. If we know the error, we can do a process known as backpropagation. Backpropagation happens when, well, the error is fed backwards through the system. If we are very much incorrect, we can tweak the weights by a significant amount. If we are close to the answer, then we'll just make very small adjustments. 
So essentially our back propagation step is learning from feedback. We tweak the weights and then we try again. We go forward again, if we are still wrong, we go back and we edit our weights. The neural network essentially learns from its mistakes and yeah, that's how it improves the quality of the predictions it gives you over time. Do this several thousands of times over and at the end of the day, you will get a trained neural network that is hopefully able to do well based on the training data that it is given. So yeah, there you go, that's machine learning, that's deep learning in a nutshell. Of course, this glosses over tons of details, but hopefully that gives you a general idea of how neural networks work. Of course, there are many things you can adjust even at the design stage. For example, how many hidden layers do you actually want to have? How many nodes do you want to have per hidden layer? These are the things you can tweak to change up the performance of the network. Of course, if you have too many nodes, too many layers, it's going to take a while to actually compute. And if you don't have enough nodes, it's not going to capture patterns in your data correctly. So yeah, there is some optimization that a user needs to do, right? It's not all just the computer doing its magic. So yeah, that's neural networks for you. It's very popular and it's very powerful when used correctly. That's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.